So in the last video I did on charging the batteries on the 48 volt system from the generator, the inverter charger here when the generator started up switched over and automatically went straight to absorption mode when the batteries were around I think about 45% something like that. Now it should have gone straight to bulk mode not absorption mode. So what I need to do is go into the settings in the MultiPlus here and have a look to see why it did that. Now I found the problem or potentially found the problem with it so I thought I would run through the settings that I use for charging my batteries when I'm running from the generator. Now I want to make a point here what the settings I use are not necessarily going to be the settings you would use and it's not necessarily going to be the settings other um, content creators on YouTube use so we all use our own settings based on on our needs so just be mindful of my settings may be different to you but I'm just showing you what I use okay so let's have a look at the computer screen we've got it plugged into the inverter charger here so I'll just show you before we look at the screen the setup on how we uh, go into the settings on the, in the inverter charger here so we've got the inverter charger and I've got the laptop here with the Victron connect app and what I use is I use this little um, USB interface connection so I'm going to focus on that one and that's what I use and that connects the computer to the uh, inverter charger so we've got that plugged in to the laptop here and this is uh, going through uh, our page I've already logged in and and so on so the issue that I believe I had was this little box here this little box here was unticked uh, so it was not basing you can see our state of charge is actually reading incorrectly and the charging was not based on state of charge which is what I want to do so I've, I've ticked that come on focus phone come on you can do it there we go I've ticked that then I need to uh, rechange this back to 300 amp hour again so let me just go ahead and do that one because we've got 300 amp hour batteries at 48, 48 volts now I have my um, state of charge uh, bulk will finish at 85% now there's a reason for that and I will go into that a little bit later but to keep the video rolling what we're going to do is I'm just going to have a look at my charge settings and this is what I charge my batteries at there's my voltages now absorption bulk are going to be the same thing on lithium profile and that's what my float voltages are we're not going to worry about any of this because this is not hooked up on a permanent basis. This is only when I'm running the generator, so you're not worrying about any of this. But I find for my system and the battery manufacturer that I use, this seems to be the best uh, voltage uh, charging that I do. So I have my AC current limit here limited to 12 amps, so I don't stall out my generator when I'm charging the uh, batteries and running the cabin from the generator. So currently, current limits it so we don't store the generator out. Now, my, my generator's out of fuel. I ran it out of fuel on that last video, and I haven't replaced the fuel. Now, I've got to go into town and get some. So I'm going to use a smaller generator. So I need to change this setting here. So I'm going to change that, and I'm going to... Let's put this... Let's make that 8 amps so we don't stall out that little generator that I'm going to run. So we've got that set to 8 amps there. Sorry about the shaky footage here. So we've got a lot of rain coming in today. So that's good because we can get everything watered. But rain means clouds and clouds means no solar. So it's going to be a real good opportunity to do our little test with the generator. So the generator I'm going to use is my little 2 kilowatt uh, portable generator and used this the other day to charge the batteries up on the Kenworth because the Kenworth batteries well they were flat so let's get oh that's heavy let's get this out like this turn this around here I'll we'll have a bit of a look at that generator because I've had this for about five years now and I'll tell you what I give it a hundred percent it's been such a good generator here is the specs for you specs loving people. So we've got it all set up now. We've got that generator running and look how quiet that generator runs. It is 
so quiet. Okay. That generator has been an absolute mint and a gem of a generator. Like I said, I've had it for five years. I've carted it all around Australia and it's done all my power needs when I've been on the road. Plus, when I first moved onto this property, living on my off-grid bus, it used to power that when I wanted to charge the old lead-acid batteries. Normally, this lead is permanently plugged in, but I took it out for this uh, video because it would have switched over, the inverter would have switched over uh, quicker than what it would have taken me to get here. So we're plugged in now, so let us go here. What we're doing is we're just going to wait for the... A charger here to synchronise itself with the inverter, then it's going to uh, switch over. Let's see what it does. Bulk mode, there we go. So we can see we've got 1600 watts coming in from the generator. We've got 73% state of charge of the batteries. We're only pulling 47 watts into the cabin. We can soon fix that when we put the kettle on. We've got nothing coming in from solar because I have solar turned off. So let's do it let's turn our solar on and get some solar power coming in as well so we're going to turn that on i'm going to wait for this to refresh and see what we're bringing in now so while i'm waiting for the charge controllers to come online and the vrm portal to update that information i just want to quickly touch base on why i have the charger or the inverter charger to stop charging at about 80%. I think that's what I had it set at, 80% state of charge. Now, in the past, when I try and charge to 100% from the generator via the inverter charger, what I was finding, once I got to about 95%, I was starting to get voltage spikes of about 60 volts going through the system once I got above 95%. I don't know why that was doing that, but it was causing a bit of issues with the BMSs wanting to trip off. So, what I do is I get to 80% state of charge, then I stop charging from the generator. I don't need to charge beyond that from the generator anyway, because it's just a waste of fuel, because we've got plenty of solar, and I've got plenty of reserve capacity, even if I don't get the batteries charged by the end of the day anyway. So that's a bit of an explanation of why I've set my uh, charging to go up to 80% on the bulk charge mode. Right, let's have a look at the system, see where we're at now. Right, so we have 1,640 watts coming in from the generator and we've got 400 watts coming in from solar on our wonderful overcast day and we've got 74% battery. Let's increase this to 2 kilowatts. Let us go to 10 amps and that should allow us to have a little bit more power coming in from that uh, generator. Okay, so we're gonna go 10 amps into that. So there we have it. We've got two kilowatts coming in from our generator now that we've upped to allow 10 amps to come in from our current limiting. So that's gonna really, really max that generator out. So I don't wanna go any higher than that. Now when I go over to the other generator, I'm going to bring that up to around about 12 amps or so. Let's go back and have a look at that generator. Yeah, it's kind of not liking that, it's running right to its limit, so we do need to drop that down a little bit. So that's running that generator right on its limit, so what I would have to do is to just dial those amps back a little bit, so we're not overloading that generator. But we don't really need this running, I don't need the, let me just turn this off for you, shut that off. Turn that off so now you can hear me. I don't need to be running the generator today. I've got plenty of power in the batteries, but I do need to just go into the settings and sort that little issue out. And of course, bring you with me to see what settings I use and how I sort these issues out when we're living off grid. And it validates about off grid living and relying only, and we're gonna get a storm any second now, Relying only on batteries and generators. If you're wanting to live off-grid full-time and just relying on these systems, you do need to know how to problem solve, troubleshoot, and understand how the systems go. If you don't understand anything like I did, then 
it's probably not a good idea to rely 100% off grid. That's my uh, recommendations I make to a lot of people that ask me about going off grid. If they don't understand it, don't go doing it. Anyway, there's the video of the settings that I use and problem solving that little issue and getting that sorted. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below. We're about to get a storm come through, get some more rain, yay, thumbs up for the rain as well. And we'll see you in the next video that's coming out on the Off Grid channel.